What's up guys, this is RG giving you another high definition broadcast as you can see we're here on Unison League and we are going to be doing the long awaited RGB video tutorial guide strategy and all that good stuff and I'm just going to go ahead uh, and uh, get into it now um, the first battle is against a <clears throat> like one of the first teams we fought <clears throat> and this is actually how a lot of uh, battles went in the beginning a uh, few days so this is like just an overview of uh, like the strategies we went through the different types of guilds and uh, things that we did obviously in other matches we made certain uh, minor mistakes are different on each one or uh, you know things like this but uh, I just wanted to give you like maybe four videos on um, four different battles just to show you guys uh, like a basic idea of how the RGBs went, uh, the strategies that came into play and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. I'll show you guys uh, from the beginning where it is. Uh, let's go ahead and get into right here. So <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is gauge what the other team is going to do. So as you can see they're not attacking. Um, it looks like there's maybe two people on the other side that are there meaning that this is a CPU front line a lot of guilds that don't have very uh, Active members like 10 active members will throw their CPUs out in a front line and have five of their players sit on the bench the strategy on this uh, CPU front line is that the CPUs will eventually die off uh, to the players or the other guys CPUs and uh, your team will then have a chance to cheer up and get an uncontested unison on the next round. This is not a good strategy. I wouldn't suggest it for anybody that is trying to get high uh, up there. Because as you can see, um, we, we realize that it's a CPU front line. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch in and uh, start cheering up. Um, what we're going to do now is basically stall. So anytime you see a CPU front line, uh, you can go ahead and stall. Basically, it's going to give you uh, a chance to either unison first round or have enough cost for uh, your your uh, WOC or Wind of Courage archers to uh, go ahead and hop in and then uh, finish off that last guy. Or, you know, you have one of your front line guys finish off that last guy, have all your... Um, Archers come in, use your WOC and the debuff on the crystal and then just kill the crystal instantly. Um, so either you want to go ahead and, uh, if your front line is strong enough to crystal break with full unison buffs, do that. Uh, or you can use your WOC archers to um, stall in and then kill the crystal that way. Uh, we actually uh, opted to just stall um, till we get unison and then uh, just unison first round. So we're just sitting there cheering up. I don't even have cheer on right now, but I'm a high DPS, so that's why I'm in there. But uh, basically, we're just going to go ahead and keep on cheering. So as you can see, um, I'm just going to fast forward just a little bit. Uh, we're going to cheer, 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 cheer. And then as you can see, we have almost all of us have unison, right? But I'm telling Rico he should switch out now because if we don't uh, switch out Rico now, we have a healer in for the unison buff. And even though there's not five people with unison, as long as there's like a good amount of people with unison that is uh, going to get you a buff and five DPS in, if you unison first round, there's no chance that the other team is going to unison back because look, there's only four, two um, people on there. And then even if they were to switch some people in, like right now, say if they're like, oh, they're going to unison soon, they need to switch people in. It's too late because um, our unison, even if there's like three unisons, they're just going to kill them anyways. Two Fire Valks and one um, uh, Shinatobe, even if it's just the three, the two Fire Valks is going to kill that Lancer anyways, right? Because there's no healer on the board, right? So looks like we're cheering up we're cheering up and quick actually pops his unison preemptively just right when i get my unison um but i'm i told we go to swap uh like before but it's okay like um you sh he stopped a little bit late but it's okay though um i think that we can do it with four dps however i would suggest that you could um swap the healer out and have the dps come in for buffs right it, obviously you want to do that instead uh, if you can, if it's possible. But look at that, two Fire Valks that killed off the last Lancer. That would have been just enough right there, just those two Fire Valks. Uh, if there is five DPS in there, obviously. Because you have the eight buff, you have 100 cost, and you have uh, your Archer DPS in there, right? So basically, uh, from this point, um, it's very, uh, a pretty much guaranteed win. However, if you don't get any procs on anything, sometimes it cuts it close. 
So, I would suggest you put that um, archer back in there. And look, uh, Throat Needle doesn't have any buffs at the start, but uh, three people popped their Wind of Courage. I think it was Throat, me, and Quick uh, popped our Wind of Courage. It might have been Gao, but we're definitely going to do a good amount of damage to this. Uh, Quick is a frontline archer, so he has some different skills, but um, and he doesn't have high DPS, so that's why you want to definitely put your DPS in instead of the, instead of the um, healer. But yeah, we had five, uh, you know, eight buff on most people. Throat had six buff, and then we had five crit on almost everyone. So that was pretty good. Um, so yeah, you definitely don't want to run that strat against a high level team. Um, you want to make sure that uh, if you see a CPU front line, you can just stall either for unison first round if your uh, front line is strong enough, and then if your unison, uh, I mean, if your your front line team isn't strong enough, um, you can uh, wait for your back line, uh, what wind of courage archers to come in, um, and kill the crystal that way. You just stall stall until they have good enough cost. Okay, so this next one is uh, PKK1 versus PKK3. And basically, uh, what I want you guys to look at and pay very close attention to um, is how many kills are going out. Uh, you definitely want to look, always be um, aware of how many kills are on each side because you don't want to rush five kills on one side and then have your uh, Wind of Courage Archer backline not have enough cost to kill it you don't want to kill them instantly you want to save a little bit of time uh, so that they can get like around a good like 40 cost that would be nice um, but some teams are actually able to just rush it but I, I don't we don't have enough DPS to do that so uh, I would say you would stall a little bit once you kill four if they're about to kill four of you though uh, five of you though you want to go ahead and push it but um, the goal here is to just count on on uh, each side how many deaths there are, so how you can kind of gauge how long you can stall for. So that's what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and um, show you the beginning of the match. So here we go, guys. We're um, I'm switching in for Timber because he was actually uh, AFK for this. Um, previously, his name is Bard, but yeah, he's changed his name to Timber. But all right, yeah. So when Looks like he's going down. He goes down on the uh, left side, so that's one. On the left side down. Uh, Rico guards a little bit late there. Yumi, oh, uh, we'll have to go down. Two on uh, the left side. So we're looking for how many people are dying. There's one on our side that died, so it's two to one. Three to one now. So it's three to one. Jay is the only person who died on uh, our side. Rico is saving the heal for um, a DPS because Yumi already has her, uh, her unison. Alright, that's four right now. So four on the left side, so that means we have to, to to wait. And I switched with Timber even though he's a CPU, just because he's a paladin, they're not gonna target him, and I'm waiting for my, my cheer to come back on my cooldowns, right? And then he potentially has two cheers, right? He has the the um the uh, regular cheer and the charisma cheer. So I'm waiting I just waited for my cheer to come back up. I, I didn't wanna stay out for too long. So I come back in, cheer again. And at this point, I know Yumi has her uh, unison because I just checked, right? And then I'm like, okay, I should Ether Exchange before I go into the uh, phase of um, Crystal D DPS. And then I feel like a good, like at this point, we are good to go. Like um, I feel like we can kill, we can kill them uh, now, and then we'll be able to actually uh, get our unison up from the Crystal. So as you can see. I, I see that he's going down, so I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll use my regular attack. And Rico did a really good job healing there. So as the, at this point, I'm saying, I'm looking at the uh, unisons, I'm like, okay, uni, uni is going to be up because Sarah will get it from the cheers plus the, um, plus the damage she's going to do to the crystal, and then Yumi already has her unison, right? And then Rico swaps out so that Gao can get a little bit extra DPS on the crystal here. And he can cheer. So, you know, Rico already used his cheer right before the round went up. And then, uh, Gao comes in, does damage, and his cheers, he actually has a cheer as well. So, um, this is just the cheer strategy without, um, high damage WOC archers. Um, and then we're just, we're just, uh, doing damage to the crystal. And then Rico actually comes back in because he has good counter unisons. So, he's the one with, like, all the water fire and uh, green and 
at this point we're just doing a fast uni but I actually make a mistake and use uh, right here I use Shinitobe which is a 26 when I have Argo and Alice that are 198 so I should have just used one of them instead because I know that we can get through with even if we just did full green I can, we know I know we can get through with just the buffs but uh, luckily as you can see uh, right there the last person who did his uni is Rico right so we have we have to have a fire unison to beat this right because if we do um, greens here then well I guess they have a Shinitobi and a and a uh, Valk as well so even if we did do all Alice then it would have been maybe a tie here uh, if we had all if everyone is, is 198 here which I believe it is but um, but luckily Rico did his uh, fire Valk like uh, that's why he came in because he has the counter unisons and we don't need full DPS to have buffs here because you guys remember we did a good amount of chunk of damage to this so that's why we pushed it to phase to the crystal um, we knew that we had the advantage there um, but it could have been bad if I actually uh, Rico didn't uh, had accidentally used his uh, fire unison instead of the um, um, the fire he had used his uh, green unison like his Alice instead of the fire unison because then I could have used my Alice and then we would have beat them anyways even if he would have messed up so that was good on Rico, and because I used this uh, crit, we I was in, we were in danger of being in a tie. So, just remember to use your high. If you're in a position where you already did enough damage to the crystal, you don't need to do use your use your buff unisons. I'm just so used to popping the um, Shinitobi at this point. I was I was like, okay, just Shinitobi it, and then Rico is gonna use his fire, right? But um, but it could have been bad, so I should have used either Argo or Alice at this point. <clears throat> Alright, so pretty much now uh, it's just a guaranteed win here because uh, they didn't put up any like Adceris to clear buffs. They have all archers out on the board and they're not going to survive the unison. So at this point it's like game over GG because you know we have crit buff now, we have triple, uh, we have all 8 buff. And there's just no possible way that we're not going to kill this crystal here. The only way that would not kill the crystal is like we all disconnected or like three of us disconnected. Even if three of us disconnect, we, we might still do it. Look at the damage on the crystal, guys. It's just like going down like instantly. Probably going to end up with 20 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, even if three of us disconnected there, it probably would have been okay. So that's that right there. Um... Just pushing the the reason that we won that is because we pushed the phase at the right time. So at this point, we're we're like, okay, we have a good amount of um, unison. Let's push the phase. So I'm like, all right, we I see Yumi's unison's up. All right, I'm gonna use my ether exchange, yes, so that I can get some more ether exchange on the next phase. And then let's let's really uh, push the phase right when Saro gets his like last his third bar up here. So that's pretty much uh, what I did. Boom, the third bar goes up. Boom, uh, Alan goes down, right? So that is what won that battle. All right, so let's go ahead and get to the next um, battle. All right, so uh, this is the first battle with uh, Cremier, which is the number two uh, ranked um, guild in the game right now. So basically what happened here is we had um, a little mess up in the strategy as well as Yumi was actually CPU for this one. So again if you want to be the top 5 guild, uh, any of the top 5 guilds or beat them, if you ever want to beat them um, in a competitive RGB, you want to be able to uh, have 10 players on. You know, you can beat them in, in GVG every once in a while because they don't have their players or they're not really playing hard. But in RGB, you have to have 10 players on. Alright, so let's go back and uh, show you guys the very beginning of the match. Um, as you can see, uh, the Ether exchanges go on this side. It looks like um, the three people here in the middle, uh, Sev, Sephiroth, and... Zeph are actually a little bit quicker than these two here, but as you can see the um, on our side, we have the two um, Lancers actually cheering instead of using EE. At this point, um, it's it's a pretty big 
mistake here because instead of our cheer here, um, the lancers are supposed to be using two EEs and then knights blitzing on uh, you know separate targets or one target so that they can take out some, one of the meteors, right? So instead of using um, a EE here on the right side, we use cheers. And then look on the on the bottom right here, guys. The um, Rico actually is using guards, so there's no way that these guys are gonna get any heals off of um, the healer right now because guard it essentially makes you prone and you can't do anything besides 50% uh, damage reduction, right? So meteor rain goes out. One, two, three meteor rains come out. Meteor rain on the top. Cecilia comes out a little bit late, but um, that's fine. So, guard goes out on quick right here. Guard already on timber here. As you can see, Yumi is going to go down, and then Jay, he doesn't have anything. He's not doing anything right now, so he's just going to go down for sure, right? Boom. So, the, the, all of the meteors, four meteors come out on the three targets here, and then timber's on the outside using guard, um, which doesn't get used, utilized, and then Rico's here still guarding. It has no heals, right? So right now he comes out of guard and he's he's spammed he was spamming heal. But I have I'm now sw swapping with Yumi. But at this point, it's almost too late because we already have two down. And then Ether Exchange go down sniper. I come in. First thing I do is Ether Exchange. That's what you want to do because if you're a backline archer, you have to have enough cost to beat the crystal, right? So that's the first thing I want you want to do is Ether Exchange when you get in as a as a backline archer. So, right there, um, they're trying to finish us off here. Photon Edge is going out. As you can see, um, there's incoming Yuki, Asami. Right there, guys. First thing they did, look at that, right here. Boom, all three backline archers, right? They're WOC archers that need cost, right? So the first thing they do, if they are called in, is Ether Exchange. That's one thing that you have to do. Because if you don't do that, then you're not going to have enough... Um, cost for the next phase if you are expected to kill somebody so if you're expected to kill someone inside there you have to use your ace exchange first all right so heal goes out on uh on everybody it looks like a big heal comes out so that's uh, probably a dignity heal yes for sure uh so the healer is doing really good job here guys so there goes the um <laughs> the well shit from me um, even though my physical reflection came up, uh, that crit went out and it does a lot of damage. So it looks like they're just doing, they're doing really good uh, targeting here. Ether exchange uh, went out on uh, sniper wrong time. It's all good though, because uh, you do have to have ether exchange. Now at this point, um, <clears throat> it's pretty much game over because they, as you can see, they they had a really long time to stall, and they all. Uh, use their costs efficiently, right? So right now, Wind of Courage goes out on all of the players at one time, and the uh, crystal's going down. So let's look at uh, exactly what's happening here. Starla, look at what uh, Starla does here uh, at the very beginning, right? Let's let's look at um, let's get this one more time. So right there, weakened resolve, right? Uh, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can see it. Weakened resolve is basically going to take the crystal down in uh, magic defense, right? So because they have a mage here for the DPS, um, weakened resolve also increases the damage of um, the archers because they're using lethal strikes and high circle snipe, right? And then the weakened resolve uh, taking down the, the magic defense of the crystal is going to help the mage do damage, right? So as you can see, the the um, archers are fully buffed now, a buff, and it's pretty much game over because it's just not not possible for us to be able to um, come back from this at this point. Um, even I think even if they weren't able to uh, finish the crystal, they would have had unison on the other side anyways. And look at our team, it's. Um, it's pretty much like, okay, well, we're going to die anyways, and uh, we don't have our uh, unison up on this side. So even if they were to lose at this one second, uh, we might have not uh, gotten it through. So 
that is pretty much how you do it um, as far as the WOC. But they had one second left there, um, so that was kind of risky. The reason that they had that one second left, though, is because they had um, they had uh, to put their archers in and use some of their costs to kill off the rest of the team, right? So that's why uh, they had to do that. All right, so if I mean honestly, if we had Yumi there using her guard, we might have been able to hold off their cost enough to um, to be able to kind of counter it, counter off there, or and not let them kill it with the one second, you know, if the guard came up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. That's pretty much it for this one, guys. You can go ahead and rewind it, and uh, I'll sh it'll show you what exactly happened. Um, and you could yeah, you know review it that way but let's go ahead and check out the next one guys this is the um the rematch of the um the other one uh versus Cremiere. so again the top two guild and then i'll show you guys uh the start of the match again where it's very very important for what happens guys very important what happens in the very beginning uh phases of the game all right so we're looking at who's using what at this uh, point and I'll, sh I'll pause it exactly when it starts so that you kind of get an idea all right so ether exchange goes out N this time I made sure we had the strategy correct so both um, J and uh, timber uses ether exchange at the correct time right we're using cheer on quick that's fine because uh, they still have to ether exchange all on this side right so ether exchange goes out on everyone Right, Sen over here isn't using Ether Exchange yet. He uses Ether Exchange now, right? Now he's uh, they're basically doing a staggered meteor rain. So two of them are meteor raining on this side here, and then Sen is gonna um, is going to EE here, and then also use uh, a meteor rain later. So look, basically we have um, we have uh, J coming in on the damage on the bottom target here and again a night splits uh, as well from um, timber kills that target so before the damage comes out uh, the CPU Yumi actually dies uh, right here to the media range which is on these three targets here these two targets didn't get media rain at all all right so the guard went out on quick so that was perfect for him so here we come guys uh, I come in on at this point and first thing uh, you do when you come in, yes, you ether exchange because you don't know when you're going to, uh, how much cost you're going to need. At this point, we're ahead because we only have one death and they have three deaths, right? So we're getting a good amount of kills here. We have four kills on them already. So we only need one more kill to push the phase, right? All right, look at what Gao actually does here. We actually have four kills. So it's four to one here, right? We don't need to push anything right now, but. Timber and Quick, which are actually our front line here, decide they wanted to switch out. This is a complete mistake here. Um, because why would you want to push out the front line DPS if you have to push to phase, right? And then you can you can always get your DPS in afterwards after you've stalled. But instead, we switch out both of our um, our DPS here that are able to push to phase. For Sero, which is a front line, I mean a backline archer, he does use Ether Exchange, and then Gao, who is uh, also a backline archer. Look at this, guys. Does not use Ether Exchange. Very, very important part of the match right here. Lethal Strikes. So he's using the Lethal Strikes right here. Didn't use his Ether Exchange. Sero did the right thing with using his Ether Exchange. However, we have already pushed to phase here. This guy is dead. There's no stalling after this. So Gao has essentially gimped himself from having to have no cost because he, when he came into the match, he, you already, he, he already had um, attacked before using his ether exchange. This is a terrible, terrible situation. At this point, we should have stalled a little bit longer here. Instead of swapping both of these guys out, Quick and Timber, we should have had us. Um, wait here just wait 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 right still waiting still waiting nope instead of uh switching uh quick out right here he's waiting still he's still waiting um you can switch timber out for one person and then he can ether exchange but i wouldn't switch 
uh, quick out right now. Um, you can just save him there right now. And then you can kill off another like archer when he comes in. Because we still have two more people... Um, or well, three more people that we can we that can die, I think, is our four three or four, so we have a lot of uh, time here. So yeah, four people to die before we even have to do anything. So honestly, we could have stalled for cost, stalled for cost, stalled for cost, and then killed one more person before they they killed our five. But instead, here comes zero. He either changes. That's fine. But Gao, he he goes ahead and actually uses his lethal strikes right here now let's go ahead and see what happens here in result to this so first thing I want to do is go ahead and use my bestial shout but I'm all tripping out because I'm I know that people don't have costs but I use my bestial shout just in time to the, for the damage to get on and look there's only four there's only four um, buffs on us and throat needle actually missed one of the buffs so people put a buff up before throat needle even got in right so look at this so there look at that guys that is incredibly bad so the wind of courage right there on sniper went out way way early Sniper Wind Courage went out early. However, um, the Rico swap was incredibly late as well. So that was late, right here. So right at this at this point where um, OOK dies right here, boom, you know he's dead, right? Boom, he's dead. Rico needs to get out right now. Rico needs to get out, and Jay needs to get out right now. They know that this is gonna phase to the crystal, and they need to swap right here. So the swap is incredibly late. Jay actually is, is good on it, so that's fine. Jay got it right on time. Rico, very late on the swap. And then it results in Sniper using his Wind of Courage without um, you know, knowing that he's going to get on everyone. Boom, Wind of Courage goes out on four targets instead of five. Gao uses his, his um, lethal strikes instead of Wind of Courage because he has no cost for Wind of Courage, meaning that he's only going to be able to get two attacks off, and then his Wind of Courage buff is not going to be able to be on the any of the team. Wind of Courage goes out again. Um, however, it's pretty much too late at this point. Gao uses his Ether Exchange now, meaning that his 30 seconds left. He's not going to be able to use his Ether Exchange again. Lethal Strikes goes out. High Circle Stunt goes out. So that's already... 40 around around 35 40 cost that he used meaning that he could have used his um, wind of courage right he could have used his wind of courage at the be uh, beginning or waited a couple seconds ether exchange and then wind of courage right so we're basically fighting this with six buffed archers and then one four buffed archer so there's no possible way we're gonna be able to take this down and Gao didn't have any cost there so Big, big lesson for you guys. Do not, do not, do not, do not rush it. And if you have, um, you know, you have to have a battle awareness. Be aware of how many people have died on each side, as well as how many, uh, when people are switching in and switching out. At this point, there's no possible way we're going to take this out. There's three Absaris, two Alice. Okay, so this is a full-on counter unison, um, and they just popped it instantly, right? Um, four Alice would actually win this uh, battle, but we don't have um, we don't have the unison for this. So we're pretty badly beaten here because poor execution, poor execution. The strategy was really on point; it was a good strategy. However, the execution was terrible, and the um, I think the DPS was actually there, but we just needed to uh, wait for cost and then all buff at the same time when I demoralize or when I bestial shouted it. So that's pretty much what it boils down to, you guys. Execution, uh, well, strategy first, execution, uh, battle awareness. Okay, so maybe the strategy first, battle awareness, execution. So those are, you know, what you need to win games. Um, probably the first thing would be attendance actually so yeah attendance strategy battle awareness and execution <laughs>
So yeah, um, that is pretty much what you have to do to win games. At this point, there's no possible way we're going to beat these guys. They have waited so long for their cost to regen. It's almost impossible to lose at this point because they have full cost, full on buffs, and they have um, their strategy on point. So they have gotten their buffs instantly. Let me show you the difference between it. Guys, um, right here, they got their... Uh, well, they got the one buff from the Alice's, so that doesn't really matter, right? But, right here, they've gotten everybody they needed to get in, right? And they gotten everybody that they needed to switch. Because they've already swapped everything. Okay, recovery mode starts. Weaken resolve goes out. Wind of courage, wind of courage, wind of courage. And then I think the wind of courage went out there. So, that's four wind of courage. And then the weaken resolve already on it instantly popped it instantly that's the difference between um you know execution having your cost at the correct amount and being ready to swap in at any, at any time okay all right so that was really really a good match um it should show you guys a lot of what to do in this meta how to play it how to uh look at um each side um deaths and not um when to kill when not to kill uh things like that so i hope this helped you guys a lot if it did help you at all definitely give me the thumbs up if it didn't give you any help then you can give me the thumbs down also uh go ahead and check out the comment section below uh tell me what you guys want in the next video it'd be really uh nice if you guys would tell me what's up um also uh shout out to all my fans also as well as uh jcb unison man he's been uh, coming out with some really good videos De definitely go ahead and check out jcb's channel it's in my channels section in my in my uh when you hit my channel it'll be like other channels his he got some really good content over there so definitely check that out guys um if you would like to subscribe i would definitely appreciate to subscribe um and if you want to donate you can hit the donate in the um in the description I think that's it for this one, guys. As always, thank you all for watching, and take it easy. Peace.